By 2050, the global population is expected to top 9 billion. So we are faced with the challenge of growing more food while conserving our natural resources. And this entails a new sustainable approach to food production and consumption all over the world. We can no longer afford to ignore the interdependencies between natural resources, the environment, hunger and malnutrition. The future we want will not materialize as long as hunger and malnutrition persist. We know how to fight hunger and improve nutrition. We know that fair access to resources, employment and income is vital. We also know that women are at the heart of global food and nutrition security. Bioversity International is working with farmers and women's groups in Kenya to increase the sustainable production and consumption of traditional leafy greens. Vegetables like nightshade, amaranth or cowpea were once a key part of people's diets and culture, but they were replaced by non-traditional crops like cabbage and kale, which are less nutritious and less suited to local climate and soils. But attitudes are changing, and now demand has increased. Hapo mazoni, watu walikuwa anavikiri, tuseme kwa mfano. At first, people didn't know you could eat plants like nightshade and amaranth. But when biodiversity came, they told us how nutritious these plants are. So now people have started planting them. Agriculture impacts more of the world's surface than any other human activity and has a critical bearing on the natural environment. A new green approach can prevent deforestation and land degradation, improve water use efficiency, strengthen ecosystem resilience and reduce the adverse effects of agriculture on the climate. Climate Smart Agriculture addresses food security and adaptation to climate change, as well as the need to reduce emissions and decrease sequestration in agricultural systems. With sea levels rising and seasonal storms becoming more severe, millions of farmers living along the southern coast of Bangladesh could lose their land and livelihoods, putting the entire country's food security at risk. The International Fund for Agricultural Development is working with the government of Bangladesh and donors to support farmers in this race against time. So far, about one million farmers have benefited from the construction of embankments and sluices that prevent salt water from contaminating freshwater sources. And they have been trained in the use of new technologies, including a high-yield variety of rice, specially bred to grow in salinated water. With this variety, we earn more, we can pay our children school fees, and we can also save a bit. It is hard to predict the impact that climate change will have here over the coming decades. But efforts like this are buying farmers more time. A world with healthy people and healthy ecosystems requires a change in the way that people interact with the environment. And if we are to meet future demand for food in a sustainable way, we have to increase productivity with systems that use fewer resources and generate less pollution. At this Food and Agriculture Organization field school, farmers are learning how the use of seeds, fertilizers and pesticides can complement rather than contradict the biological processes. 
Excessive use of chemical pesticide has left water sources contaminated and dangerous for human and animal health. But a proper use of natural pesticides, made with locally available plants, is really making a difference. Chemical pesticides made more work and damage a lot of my crop. With the new pesticide, you just apply it, there's no extra work and you can sell all you produce. I have seen the benefits for me and my family. Thanks to a new approach and training in marketing, diversified production, food safety and quality, farmers have increased their yields and are getting better prices for their produce. And the IPPM project is boosting productivity and livelihoods while protecting the environment in seven countries across West Africa. For more than 20 years, a largely unnoticed social and environmental experiment has been unfolding in the Egyptian desert. In an attempt to tackle soaring youth unemployment and overcrowding in cities, the Egyptian government offered desert land to graduates. All they had to do was farm it. Hassan Abdul Rahman, who studied to be an accountant, was trained by the International Fund for Agricultural Development in how to farm his land using minimal amounts of water, helping create tracts of green as well as a new desert economy. Workers come from across Egypt to work here, so it has opened a great many opportunities. People who didn't have work found a way to farm, and now business is booming. So far, more than one million acres of land have been reclaimed and are contributing to national food security. Turkana is one of the hottest and driest parts of Kenya. But sorghum crops are flourishing thanks to a water conservation project designed to trap what little water there is. When the rains come, water collects in the flat dike walls built out of the earth known as buns. It gradually filters down and seeds can be planted in the moist soil. The buns were built by the farmers themselves as part of a World Food Program Food for Assets project. They each received rations for a family of eight as payment for working on a project which will make them more resilient and able to grow more food. Before we built the bond, we were really having trouble getting enough food. Now we're able to grow crops, which gives us food and money. Improved farming practices are part of the solution, but sustainability requires a reform of the entire agriculture and food system, including a reduction in food losses and a shift in consumption patterns. Because in a world where one in seven people go hungry, roughly one-third of global food production gets lost or wasted. Consumers in rich countries throw out 222 million tons of food every year. That is almost as much as the entire net food production of sub-Saharan Africa. In low-income countries, food is lost mostly during the early and middle stages of the food supply chain, frequently due to infrastructure problems like a lack of storage facilities. Along with the food that nobody eats, we also lose the water, soil, and other resources that were used to grow it. In the Republic of the Gambia, food and resources are scarce, so nothing can be wasted, and every effort to add to the value of what little you have makes a real difference. But a food and agriculture organization project is helping farmers minimize post-harvest losses. Onion farmers are now curing their produce by leaving them out to dry before bagging them. This will ensure that they don't rot and can be stored for up to six months. The project is working with farmers' associations 
to establish a modern, competitive and commercially vibrant food processing sector. Hibiscus flowers are often thrown away when preparing the leaves for cooking. But once processed to become jam and juice, they become an important source of income. This initiative helps us be more self-sufficient. We can invest more in our farming, get better yields and live in better conditions. The members of the Women's Food Processing Association have an extra source of income now. Because thanks to effective marketing techniques, the new products are being sold throughout the country. Around 12,000 people will soon be storing their produce in these metal silos, specially designed for use by families or the whole community. FAO and partners are working together on the Save Food Global Initiative on Food Loss and Waste Reduction. Because all actors involved in food supply chains, from producers to consumers, need to change management practices, technologies and behavior. More inclusive and effective governance for agricultural and food systems is essential. And the transition to a sustainable future must entail an equitable sharing of costs and benefits. Because for sustainable consumption and production, we need fair and well-functioning food and agricultural markets. Small farmers in El Salvador can invest in their own production through a pilot initiative that uses the World Food Programme's demand for staple foods to develop local markets. The Purchase for Progress programme, known as P4P, addresses the root causes of hunger and food insecurity by helping farmers produce more, better quality food, sell their crops at a fair price and boost their incomes. And P4P promotes high quality standards, the strengthening of farmers' associations, and greater involvement of women. Now, in my house, my views count because I am contributing to the family income. It has helped me a lot because it has shown me that as a woman, I am worth a lot. I am not ashamed of being a farmer, on the contrary, I am proud. Food and nutrition safety nets, such as school meal programs, resilience building projects and cash and food for work programs are vital to enable the most vulnerable people to escape poverty. Social protection frameworks and policies are needed to address short-term needs and promote longer-term growth. And of fundamental importance are policies to protect the environment. In the far north of Asia lie the grasslands of the sweeping Mongolian steppe. As Mongolia's economy has grown, the expansion of grazing lands, mining, demand for timber and human-sparked fires have all taken their toll on the nation's forests. But the Food and Agriculture Organization is working with the community to protect their woodland resources with training on forest assessment, mapping, management, marketing and fire prevention. Our attitude toward the forest has changed. Now we use it properly and treat it like our own. This initiative will prevent desert sands from lowering air quality across Asia and can help safeguard the livelihoods of the local community. Rio Plus 20 must result in a change of mindset. Sustainable agricultural and food systems that make efficient use of our natural resources must become the basis of tomorrow's economy. People are at the heart of sustainable development. And with sufficient political will and vision, agriculture can help us achieve the sustainable future we want. A world without hunger. <laughs>